Hey guys, what's up? It's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Long time, no videos. Sorry about that. So lately I've been having some PTSD, some anniversary trauma. So I just haven't had the energy or the ability to talk about my mental health the last couple of weeks. You know, two years ago, in April of 2017, I was in jail, in psych wards, and I recognize now that anniversary trauma is a real thing. And along with bipolar disorder, I've also been diagnosed with PTSD, and sometimes that slips my memory. So I needed to take care of myself. And something that I've learned about myself lately is that in the past when I would have these flashbacks and this PTSD, I would go to the store and go get a bottle of wine because that was the way that I dealt with it is by just numbing it out and escaping it. And as all of you are aware, I'm really committed to staying sober. When you don't have alcohol or smoking weed as a temporary escape, you're forced to feel your feelings and to face it head on. Therefore, I have been some days very drained, very tired, very upset, on the verge of tears. And on those days, instead of going to the store and getting a bottle of wine, I have laid on the couch, I have watched TV, I've allowed myself to cry, I've spent time by myself, I have gone on walks with my dog. Some days, if I feel like going to the gym, I'll go to the gym, but this has been a really important time for me to really listen to my body and listen to my mind and give myself whatever it needs. If that means I need to go get some candy, I'm gonna go get some fucking candy. If that means I need to eat a cheeseburger, I'm going to eat a cheeseburger. If that means I need to have a smoothie and go to the gym, that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, lately I've just been really giving myself grace and being really lenient and easy on myself. So with doing that, I've been able to recover a lot faster. So I'm feeling a lot better. I have definitely missed making YouTube videos and I didn't mean to leave anyone hanging on my videos like I didn't want anyone to think I'm not doing YouTube anymore because I definitely am I just needed to take a step back because sometimes for me talking about these types of hard things that I've been through it does trigger me and I need to remember that my mental health and my self-care is more important than making a YouTube video so with that being said I'm excited to be back a couple of weeks ago, it was my grandma's birthday, and I was on my way to go to her birthday dinner, and unexpectedly, while I was in the car on the freeway, I started having flashbacks and a panic attack, and it honestly came out of nowhere. I had felt fine all day. I, you know, got ready, did my hair, did my makeup. I was excited to go to this dinner, but there was going to be a lot of extended family there that I haven't really seen or spoken with since everything has gone down with my mental health. And I think that I thought that I was ready to do that and to see those people and to hold my head high. And I still feel like I am ready, but for whatever reason, my body and my brain was triggered and I just knew that I needed to take a step back. I rode down there to the dinner with my parents and then my husband was gonna meet us there. So my husband picked me up and we went home and I relaxed and you know I just have to take care of myself it's really hard because sometimes I beat myself up like you know get over it a lot of people have things harder than you you can't even go to your grandma's birthday dinner like what the fuck is the matter with you you know those thoughts like play through my head but at the same time I have been through a lot and there are some things that went down two years ago in the same city where my grandma's nursing home is so it's like as soon as we got off the exit I saw places that I was when I was manic and a lot of bad things happened during that time and so yeah it triggered me. So in my next video I plan to go back to my manic episode last year and kind of talk about what happened one year ago like right now. Today is May 1st 2019 and May 1st 2018 I was a fucking train wreck. I was drinking every day. 
I was off my medications and I was slowly spiraling out of control. And so long story short, in May of 2018, it was May 17th that my family sent me off to California to go to a dual diagnosis center. And at that center, I got into an argument with someone that worked there. I decided to jump the fence. I ran to the gas station. I called the LAPD to come with me to the treatment center to get my shit because they wouldn't give me my stuff. And then I was manic on the streets of LA for 48 hours or so until I was detained by the police, taken to a psych ward in South LA. And then from there, I escaped from the psych ward with a friend that I met in there and we took a Greyhound bus from LA to Santa Cruz where I was in Santa Cruz for a few days. And then from there, I finally flew to Pennsylvania where I was at last summer for 70 days to get the help that I needed so desperately. And I'm so grateful that I got that help. So in these next couple of videos, I'm going to be sharing that story more in detail. Like I have expressed, like it's insane. Like I can't believe I went from Seattle to LA to Santa Cruz to Pennsylvania to back to here. And when I got back to Seattle, from treatment in Pennsylvania after being there from June 7th of 2018 until August 18th, I slipped into a really bad depression because I knew that I needed to be done with alcohol. And for me, that meant my life is over because my life revolved around drinking and being social and drinking with friends. And so knowing that I was going to be getting sober, especially with everything I've been through, knowing subconsciously that alcohol was the way that I escaped things was extremely devastating for me. I felt miserable. I felt like my life is over, but it wasn't over. My life is better than it's ever been, even though I have setbacks now. Um, mentally, I am glad that I'm feeling my feelings and that I'm processing things because then I can actually heal and move forward. If I was to continue drinking with all of this stuff that I've been through and I wouldn't have the courage to face it head on and to conquer it and heal it and feel it and all those types of things, it would just keep haunting me the rest of my life. So in my opinion, I just came to the conclusion that the only way for me to get to the other side of things was to try something I've never tried and that was to get 100% sober. and. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It is the best thing I've ever done. I cannot believe that on May 7th, I will have 11 months sober. And on June 7th, I will have one fucking year sober. Oh my God. Like I can't even, I can't even believe it. I never thought I could do it. And honestly, I wish I would have done this a long time ago because life is so much better. I never have a hangover. I wake up every day feeling clear, feeling happy, and I never knew that I could be this happy, you know? I thought that I was doomed when I got diagnosed with bipolar. I thought, oh my god, my, my fucking life is over. I have a mental illness. I'm doomed. And the truth is, you can live a happy, healthy life with a severe mental illness, you know? There's no guarantees in life. There's no guarantees that I won't get sick again. However, I know that if I stay sober, I take my medications and I stay with people that love me unconditionally and support me unconditionally and surround myself with love, life can be better than I could have ever imagined. So like I said, although I have setbacks, I'm in a great place and I'm ready to get back on YouTube and make some videos. If you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe and I will see you in my next video. I've missed you guys so much and I'll see you soon.